In today's episode of The Weather Farm, we're discussing the unseasonably cool temperatures that is bringing the first freeze watches for the lower 48 this fall season. We also dive into the weather patterns that will impact the United States over the next week, and we take a look at what's going on in the tropics. We're not focusing just on the Atlantic, as Hawaii may be in the path of a potential tropical storm. Let's dive right into the details. As we begin our day on our Friday, we are still monitoring that area of low pressure that is centered just to the south of Hudson Bay. It is pulling a lot of cold air in behind this system as we see snow showers across parts of western Ontario for our Friday afternoon into our evening. That is going to eventually start to move off towards the east as we go through the weekend, but it is going to maintain its cooler than normal temperatures across that part of eastern Canada. Out across the southwest, we are watching offshore what was once a tropical system in the Pacific Ocean. It is now extra tropical, and it is really just remaining very stationary off the Baja California coast. We don't really expect that to have much impact to the lower 48 over the next several days. Across parts of Florida, we'll continued scattered showers as we get into that afternoon daytime heating. So a heavy downpour can't be ruled out. And across the central plains, making their way into the Ohio and Tennessee valleys, we are setting the stage for the potential of some severe weather as a cold front continues to make its way from parts of Ontario back through the central plains and it moves east on our Friday night. So let's dive into our future radar. As we go through the afternoon on Friday, we're gonna watch storms start to fire across parts of Kentucky, Tennessee, down into Arkansas and Louisiana. This could have an impact on some of those Friday night football games. Across parts of Florida, we're continuing to monitor those showers, and we start to see that low start to pull off to the northeast across parts of Co northwestern Quebec by the time we wake up on our Saturday morning. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center has gone ahead and highlighted an area from Tennessee up through West Virginia and southeastern Ohio for a slight risk of severe weather on our Friday afternoon into our Saturday morning. We have a marginal risk that it sends back and includes the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Our main threat on our Friday evening is going to be tornadoes, and it's just a 2% threat, and that does extend through eastern Kentucky down and does include the Nashville area. While we do have a, a larger area that is under the threat of hail, with that temperature contrast, we have very warm temperatures to the south and much cooler temperatures to the north and west. As those two air masses collide, we are going to watch for hail to develop anywhere from Dallas to Little Rock, Nashville, all the way up towards Morgantown, West Virginia. And we could have strong winds associated with those thunderstorms. We have this highlighted area in yellow where we could see winds gust 60 to 70 miles per hour Friday night into our early Saturday morning. So if you are in those impacted areas, please stay weather aware. Make sure you have a way to get a hold of those weather notifications, whether on your phone or whether a ra weather radio in your home. Take shelter if severe weather moves into your area. As we look at our Saturday morning lows, we are seeing widespread 30s making their way into southern Minnesota, as well as the Dakotas, even down into Nebraska. We're going to have upper 40s for central Missouri into central Illinois. Western, northwestern Illinois, you could be approaching 40 degrees for your overnight lows. So we really see where the core of that cool air is centered. Out ahead of that front, up and down the East Coast, we're going to have a muggy night with temperatures here in the 60s and 70s for your overnight lows, 70s and even some 80s down across Texas for your Saturday morning lows. And that has gone ahead and prompted the National Weather Service to issue parts of western North Dakota with freeze watches for our Saturday morning. Now, this is just the first of what I expect to be a larger area, as I do expect that those freeze watches will extend down into South Dakota as well as eastern Montana for our Saturday morning. Out across parts of New Mexico, we have flood watch effect, and out across parts of Oregon and Northern California, we have red flag warning for those dangerously dry conditions, but strong winds that could lead to wildfires out in that part of the country. So definitely a lot going on in the United States, but it is the cold that we are watching at this time. And if we take a closer look across this area for our Saturday morning, we're going to start to see widespread temperatures in the mid to low 30s possible as we get into these darker greens across parts of western North Dakota, even making their way down into South Dakota and even far northwestern Nebraska. And as I mentioned, eastern Montana, you could be in the upper 30s as well with the real core of the t colder temperatures across parts of southern Saskatchewan. And I would expect that we see areas there dipping below the freezing mark. But we can't forget about our friends back here in the Arrowhead of Minnesota, where you also will be seeing temperatures uh, in the mid-30s for your overnight lows. You've already had some sub-freezing temperatures earlier this week as you're closer to that core of the cold air with that low just centered to the south of Hudson Bay. So definitely a uh, cool start to our weekend across most of the upper tier of the United States. And as we move into our Saturday, that threat of severe weather, which was from the Ohio and Tennessee valleys, it moves off into the northeast in the mid-Atlantic, stretching from North Carolina all the way up into Maine, up and down the east coast. So any of those Saturday college football games anywhere in this area in the northeast down through the mid-Atlantic, please stay weather aware. Make sure that if you're out, you take an umbrella with you because those storms will be rolling through in the afternoon to the early evening. And this is just a picture of what the weather map could look like by the time we get to Saturday afternoon. 
That cold front that has brought the reinforcing shot of cooler air across the Great Plains into the Ohio and Tennessee valleys, it has made its way down, almost down to the Gulf Coast. Dallas, you're behind the front. Little Rock, uh, Jackson, Mississippi, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, making its way towards making its way towards the East Coast. So that's why we're going to have area of strong precipitation and storms for this part of the country as we get into our Saturday afternoon. With that counterclockwise rotation, area of low pressure, it's going to pull that moisture and help fuel those storms Saturday afternoon into evening. Out west, we're going to have scattered showers across the Four Corners region, a little bit more heavier concentrated area of showers for the Pacific Northwest for your Saturday afternoon. And your afternoon highs on Saturday, if you're attending any of the football games in the northern tier, make sure you take a jacket with you. It'll be windy, it'll be cool with highs in the 50s, 40s across parts of Western Ontario, 60s and 70s through the middle corridor. But here is why we think that the East Coast will have severe weather for our Saturday, because we're going to see those 80s and 90s making their way up into eastern Virginia, even mid to upper 80s for parts of Connecticut for our Saturday afternoon highs. So as that cooler air meets this warm moisture air off the Atlantic, that is the classic setup for thunderstorm. Out west, we're watching temperatures in the deserts near 100. That warmth is extending up through Washington State. But you're about to end your hot streak as we see a pattern change beginning by the time we get to next week. And we'll have one more night of very cool temperatures with that core of the cold air even making its way a little bit further south as that cold front makes its way further south, allowing more of that cooler air to spill in. So places like Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, even into central Illinois and Indiana, you could be touching 40 degrees or lower for your Sunday morning temperatures. So let's take a look at our upper level pattern. Here is that low pressure that's been here all week. Here comes that reinforcing jab of cooler air Friday into Saturday. It hangs around into the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley and eventually makes its way out by the time we get to our Sunday afternoon into our Monday. Out west, we start to see that ridge building across the Rockies, making its way into the plains. And here comes that trough onto the west coast. That's going to be our sign of a warming trend as we start to see these arrows start to turn out of the south and southwest bringing warmer air to the Central Plains and the eastern half of the United States as the West Coast starts to turn much cooler by the time we get to the middle of next week. So let's put that future radar into motion. Saturday afternoon, as I mentioned, we can see storms up and down the East Coast. By the time we get to Sunday morning, that's moved offshore. We're still going to have some disturbed weather across the Southeast for parts of Georgia and Florida. We start to look towards the Pacific Northwest for that next trough to dig in. We start to see these pressure lines building across the Central Plains, indicating a warming trend. And with those southwesterly flow, meaning that cooler temperatures from the north, by Monday or Tuesday, we could see severe storms setting up across places like Nebraska, Iowa, into Kansas with the clash of the two air matches. Something we're definitely going to be watching here over the next several days. And speaking of the next several days, Sunday is going to be a picture-perfect day for the eastern half of the United States. We're starting to get some hints in the trees of fall colors, especially across the northern tier, where temperatures on your Sunday are going to be in the 50s and 60s, 50s and 60s into the northeast, 70s across the middle, but we already see that surge of warm air. 80s all the way into eastern Montana, where tonight you're experienced freeze watch. We see the 90s and 100s across parts of the southwest, cooling down into the 80s and 90s for most of Texas and along the coast, the 90s really being pushed down into parts of Florida. By the time we get to Tuesday, that warmth is in full effect. We, look at this. We could be seeing temperatures in the middle 90s for parts of South Dakota and eastern North Dakota, almost a 60 to 70 temp degree temperature change in about a 96 hour period. That warmth is going to be strong across the central plains, but out west where you've been dealing with the 90s and 100s for the last two weeks, temperatures here are going to be held down into the 70s and 80s, 70s and 80s up and down the east coast. But that warmth continues to spread east by the time we get to our Thursday with widespread 80s and 90s. Indianapolis flirting in the upper 80s to near 90 for your Thursday afternoon highs. And that warmth continues down through the southern tier through Texas. But look across the Dakotas. We're starting to cool down just a little bit. Temperatures here being held into the 70s, which is still slightly above normal for this time of the year. And the real core of the cool air is across parts of Ontario and Quebec. But by Friday, we start to see signs that something could be happening in the atmosphere. Now, this is a week away. A lot can change. But there are some hints that we're going to see an upper level low develop across the northern tier by the time we get to next weekend. Where that low eventually wobbles and what impacts it has on our temperatures and our weather, that's still to be determined. We'll have more updates on that as we get more model runs and more data in the future. But just want to kind of let you know that even though we're going to warm up for the middle of next week, that warmth could be short-lived as we could see yet another round of cool weather impacting the northern tier of the United States. We just got a latest update of the drought monitor here for the United States. This was released yesterday on Thursday, data through Tuesday at 8 a.m. And what we're seeing here is anything in the eastern half of the United States, if you've been exceptionally dry 
over the last four to six weeks. That has allowed some areas to go into an abnormally dry or a moderate drought with a couple of pockets of severe drought uh, for areas through Missouri, Arkansas, where we saw exceptional amounts of rain here across for the spring. We've gone very dry over the last month, month and a half. Out west, we're still seeing those extreme droughts and those exceptional drought conditions for parts of western Colorado, western Wyoming, making their way down to Arizona. And even into the northeast, we're starting to see dry pockets. This will have an impact on our fall foliage if we do not get more rain, as those nights get longer and the temperatures drop, the dry conditions will accelerate uh, the leaf color turning as we approach the middle and end parts of September. And when we look at our precipitation impact map over the next five days, we have a real pocket where we are not expecting rain over the next five days. The real heavy rains are going to be kept across parts of Florida up and down the east coast with those storms that move through on our Saturday. And as I mentioned, we're going to see a trough dig across the Pacific Northwest. That's going to bring rainy and stormy conditions to parts of Washington and Oregon over the next five days. So you could see rainfall exceeding two to three inches across that part of the country. And our temperature outlook map for the next eight to 14 days, while we are enjoying this cooler pattern for the eastern half of the United States, it's not going to last long. We know we'll get another rebound of warmer temperatures, and that is the case as we get into our second full week of September with much of the country above normal for your temperatures. And in terms of our precipitation, those areas east of the Mississippi where we definitely need the rain, you have a greater likelihood of remaining below normal in your precipitation amounts for the next 8 to 14 days. The real above normal precipitation is going to be across the Pacific Northwest and the northern tier through the Dakotas where you could see above normal precipitation during this time. I do want to jump down to the tropics here. We do have an area that we are continuing to monitor this area that's in the central Atlantic, it is moving west at about eight knots per hour. So it's moving very slowly and by, it'll take about another three to five days to make its way towards the Leeward Island. But there is now a nice chance that this area will develop to a tropical system over the next seven days. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if by the time we get through this weekend that we have a tropical depression that we are monitoring. Where it goes after that and because of the speed that it's moving, um, we're go that's a lot to be determined. There is an area of high pressure here just to the east of Bermuda that is really keeping uh, with that clockwise rotation. It's keeping everything pretty calm. Um, it's allowing the system to continue to move towards the west in very favorable environments with high sea surface temperatures and low wind shear. So we're going to continue to monitor this and we'll bring you the latest update on this particular area in a future forecast. But I do want to jump out to the Pacific. So this is the Eastern Pacific. This is an area that they're watching for development of yet another low pressure system. But I want to point to Hurricane Kiko. And here we are with Hawaii. Hurricane Kiko is a category two uh, hurricane at this point. And it is moving off to the west, northwest at about nine uh, knots per hour. It is in an area where the sea surface temperatures are relatively warm, around 26, 27 degrees centigrade. But as we get up towards Hawaii, those sea surface temperatures do drop into the lower 20s. So it's going to run into an environment that is not as favorable for tropical development. But there is the thought that over the next 24 hours, we could see some slight strength with Kiko. In fact, the cone from the National Hurricane Center does upgrade it to a major hurricane by the time we get to Saturday morning as it continues that west northwesterly track. But as I mentioned, as it gets closer to Hawaii, it's going to run into those cooler waters and it's going to be downgraded to a category one, category two hurricane. And as it approaches Hawaii, it is likely to be downgraded into a tropical storm. But it is going to bring heavy amounts of rain likely to the Hawaiian Islands if it continues on this path. And so we're going to continue to watch this and we'll bring you the latest. But if you are have travel plans out that way or if you know someone on the islands, make sure they're aware that there could be some impacts with high surf and rip currents by the time we get to the middle of next. Well, we thank you for joining us here at the Weather Farm for your Friday. We hope you've enjoyed this forecast. Let us know what's going on in your area. Drop a comment down there. Click that bell notification icon so you can be alerted when we have a new video. We hope to see you again on Monday, and we hope you have a wonderful day.